I burned my tongue. Blah, blah, blah. Hi, I'm Christian and welcome to... Uh, welcome to uh, Lazy Devs Pico 8... Uh, uh, Pico 8 Hero. Uh, we're making a pork leg. Uh, a rogue leg. That's called pork leg. Um, so yeah, uh, well, last, last time around we talked a little bit about um, how we make... Uh, we're supposed to make these... Um, we created like this array of different tiles that correspond to different um, that should be placed on different locations depending you know what the surrounding tiles of a given wall are these are wall tiles and we have to construct the level out of those wall tiles now and so we have to kind of like figure a way how to pick the right wall tile for each individual spot in the map and so today we I have been working on a little thing here so today we're gonna be working uh, I'm gonna show you off what I prepared for you guys I'm gonna go save pork um, tile mask. It's fine. I'm gonna save a new file, and I'm gonna delete all of this. You madman! This was important stuff. All of we just gonna like we're gonna start from scratch, guys. This is not. This was not good. <laughs> this was not good. We have to start from scratch. What? So the reason why we're starting a new file is because we are going to use this bro, uh, this bro. We're going to use this kind of like um, this. Uh, we're going to use Pico Eight to generate um, to generate our list of tiles. Here's a bit of a problem that we have now. Um, let me let me show you real quick. Woo! Hey, I'm here in the corner. Um, so this is something I made. Bam! These are two pages of A4 uh, that list all of the, the tiles that we have down there and um, where I figured out what kind of um, signature all these different tiles have including uh, in orange a little bit uh, you know the mask that, that um, we're gonna use for them. So this is all of the tiles uh, that you're gonna need and yes this file will be downstairs in doobly-doo if Christian remembers, if future Christian remembers. You go future Christian, you, I, I trust in you and I also believe in you. Um, yeah, so I scanned this in so I don't have to like show you my actual original thing that's in this, in this book, it's great. Anyways, uh, so what we have to do now, we have to go through all of this and we have to get this data inside our computer. But you will see if you look closely can I look closely? Please tell me I can look close. Ah, yes, we can look closely. But alas, oh, we can even scroll, that's good. So if you look closely, you will see that all these numbers, these the numbers correspond to the tile that, that is in our tile map, but you will see those numbers. They are, alas, they are not ordered. Because I used, you know, I, I use kind of like logical cl uh, clusters. Um, so I can like make sure that I'm not missing any, any given tile. Um, and this resulted in this kind of like awkward situation where, um, well, we um, we cannot like we the, the, we cannot find out what the right order is of those, but that's fine because we have programming to for us to do the job. So that's what I was thinking. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put down all of these things like manually into an array at the at any given slot, um, and then we're gonna use Pico Eight to write them out as a text, and then we're gonna get that text in our original uh, uh, original files. It's gonna be like a little technique that I kind of. Um, kind of like to show you how we can use Pico 8 itself to get uh, to kind of like um, input data or manipulate data for your actual program. Um, so, so let's do like an init. And actually, most of the stuff that we're going to do is going to be uh, in our init function. Now, uh, before we do anything, you might be wondering why, how are we getting how are we getting the code like how we are getting text out of Pico 8. It's like a program to run, it's like just graphics. How do you get stuff out of Pico 8? Haha, <laughs> well, the trick is going to be the following here. I have like pasted this in print h. Print h, this is like a copied from the um, Pico 8 wiki. Uh, prints uh, a text in this, in this case, hello world. And we pr it prints it into a text file on our computer. So this could be like, um, Tile, um, tile mask. 
.txt, right? And uh, the third uh, parameter, true or false, that kind of just, just tells you whether this, the, if the file is already existing, if it should get deleted uh, and overwritten, or if it should, the new text should be appended at the end of the text file. So if we're gonna do this, we're gonna run this, save, run, it, it run, then we're gonna go folder, you will see there's there's a bunch of files in here. These are like the tile maps that I have. But here is tile ma mask txt dot phl. The phl is I think like a security thing. I'm not exactly sure, but I think it might should be a security thing to like, prevent you from creating like arbitrary files using pk8 and running them. <clears throat> so um, we can now open this with a with a text editor, and there there's our hello world inside a text file. So this is how you can use PQ8 to actually do useful stuff, not just like video games, but, but actually, you know, computate and, and, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, good, good, good. So we're gonna create a new, um, uh, uh, we're gonna create a new array. We're gonna call this wall sig. And we're gonna create a second array. We're gonna call this wall um, msk. This is going to be like two arrays for for the two uh, for the two um, two data types that we have to type in, and then we're going to go add, and then first of all, let's call let's call this W sig. So, oh, let's call just sig and misc. It's fine. We, we can rename them later on anyway. And we're going to go add sig, and then here is where we're going to start adding our actual. Um, our, our actual data, right? So there's gonna be zero B. So for example, this first one. Um, oh, by the way, no, we're not adding SIG. Mm, we have to do it differently because again, this is why we're doing this. So we can say SIG 16, 16 equals, and then zero B 101, this is the upper one, one, and then zero zero one one, right? Something like this. So this would be the signature 16, and this will be the um, the mask 16. Um, so this could be 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. No, wait, I, I looked. Oh, we have to watch out. One mistake, and, and all of this will be for naught. OK, so this allows us to like inject this information at one given spot and then we're gonna just print out the entire array um uh yeah in, in one go and so here's here's how we would do that so we're gonna go for um huh for i equals um the problem is with my text here is i started at zero it's it's not good so we have to start at zero looping through this uh, the highest number that I think we have is 46. I, why am I looking here? I could also look there. <laughs> 45 is the high one. Yeah, here's 45. Okay, that makes sense. 45, um, starting at zero, would, would make 46 different tiles plus an empty tile and a fully uh, walled tile. So that that's how he gets 48 tiles. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go uh, from, but this, you know, just for these size, we're gonna go from zero to 46. That's the highest number. Do and um, so we're gonna, gonna do something like local txt equals, and then we're gonna start with like, uh, with uh, the name of our array. That's gonna be something like, uh, wall underscore sig equals then curly brackets and then close parentheses and then uh, wait um, yeah <laughs> we're gonna add, we're gonna fix this later uh, txt equals txt dot dot now we're gonna add the signature And we are going to type in the I in here, right? And then dot, dot, and then a comma. So it's like all, all of these are comma separated. And yeah, that's gonna be it. And then we have to, we could do it, uh, you know, with, with code, but we can also just manually close. It's gonna be fine. Uh, we can manually close, close the curly brackets. 
Um, because it's like you you can add the curly brackets, but you have to remove the final comma. It's, it's fine. It's gonna be fine. Um, so we're gonna have a second text that's gonna be the wall um, misc, and we can do the same thing with the misc. Um, text two dot misc, and then finally we're gonna go print h. Uh, it was print h. Oh man, why did I delete it? I'm such a such a noobster. Okay, <laughs> so it's gonna be print uh, h text, comma. Um, how did we call it? Um, tile mask dot txt, and we are going to. Um, Delete if the, the a file exists, we're gonna get deleted, and we're gonna in second um, in a second thing we're gonna print uh, text to time uh, txt, but this time we're gonna get append it. So this is generally our idea. Um, I'm I wonder if this will work. Yeah, there's a nil and we cannot concact nil values, but actually, that's actually a feature, that's actually good, because that means that uh, we are going to, uh, if there's a problem, if there's like a, if one of the tiles is incorrectly numbered, we're gonna get an error. We know that there's a gap in our list. And that's something I actually one of the reasons why I wanted to do this. So let's um, let's just go from zero to zero, just like one entry basically. Okay, um, and then folder, let's grab it. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, okay, so it's, it's, and the cool thing, additional cool thing about this process is here we took putting in the, here we're putting like the binary numbers, but when it uh, outputs those numbers, they are going to actually get reduced to just the actual number, not the binary number, but the digital number. So that also even makes our job a little bit, a little bit easier. And we have to just remember that at the end, we have to do it like the curly brackets to close everything up. So this is this is this is our job now. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go through this process and we're gonna. I'm sorry, but yeah, we have to. We have to go through this process and we have to type in all of these numbers that we see here manually into Pico 8. And uh, you might you might be thinking like, uh, whoo, you, you you are the lucky one. You know, I'm the one who actually has to do it. But you can I just like go downstairs and doobly do, and, and the final file will be there for you waiting for you. But I still wanted to kind of like show off like the entire process, just so if you have to do it at some point with you know with your own specially cooked, uh, maybe your tile map looks differently. Maybe there's like different um, challenges that your tile map has. This is generally a tool set that will take care of this, um, going through through this kind of process and and you know making sure that um, that you know all of these align correctly. All right, so now I will uh, play maybe some beautiful music as I have to, I have to sit down and, and buckle up and type up all these things into my file. So see you in a second when this is finished. Oh, wait, wait, before we, we go. Um, I actually want to have like easy access to this stuff. So let me, let me uh, input data. I'm gonna create a function called input data. And this function, wait a minute, I just want to make sure. Okay, this function will um, will just like be the actual data. So you know, all of the um, all of the output is actually here up um, all the way upstairs in the init function, and all of the data is down here. You know, all the way down here. Just just so everything separated. All right, guys. So see you in a second. <laughs>
and we're done ladies and gentlemen look at this look at this beautiful result so here is here's our text file with a, like a very very long text but all of the numbers are in here and each of those numbers is a signature if it is if printed out printed out in binary that represents the different files done that, it's that easy well it took took a couple of minutes um, so a couple of things to maybe to keep keep in mind um, uh, for like maybe because maybe you want to try like different approaches this is kind of like a very special approach that I used here <laughs> I have to say this is I'm not sure, I'm not really that sure about it but hey it works so whatever uh, but if you think you know you you have a better solution here um, there is a better solution so like in the website that I posted um, in this blog post that where this guy explained the blob and everything uh, he noted that um, if you can I zoom in I can zoom in right okay cool so if you look um generally the uh, the masks the X's are generally in the corners they're never in the cardinal directions and also they typically they generally show up when there is um there's a zero in the corresponding uh, like they're usually at the borders of a zero if there's a zero in the cardinal direction then the neighboring corners will be excess so you can take this into advantage and then uh, use like some kind of formula to calculate out the masks if you wanted to but the problem is sometimes the masks are important sometimes the zero like the whatever is in in the cor in the corner is actually important so it's it's kind of difficult to to wrap your head around this a little bit and also um like the code to uh, generate the mask is would be maybe more complicated than just typing it all up it's 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 just 48 numbers it's not that hard you know mm. and especially if you prepare it this well it's fine i think like having a document like this is um it's kind of important so you can kind of like understand what's happening so you have like a visualization of what's happening so if there's any kind of problem you can just go down to this document and, and find out if the number is correct is what I th thought. Okay, so uh, with this in mind, um, let's see if our code actually works in Pico 8. I mean, it, we know it works in Pico 8, but let's see if it works in our program. So we're gonna save this. We're gonna load pork. And here, um, we're gonna put it this here, wall sig and wall misc. By the way, we can do a similar process with uh, with curve sick and curve mask. I will probably eventually do it. I will probably do it like off camera. Mm. So like these long numbers are like converted into binary numbers. I think that's that's um that's gonna be a uh, that wouldn't be a bad bad situation. Okay, so now that we have the wall sick and wall mask, what are we going to do now? Well, we are going to do a um, function that just like does the decorations for us. So let's try that. Um, so here, um, after we spawn the mobs, wait, maybe we want to do before we spawn the mobs. I'm not sh exactly sure, maybe before the mobs. Uh, we're gonna do, we call this make borders, or, or, yeah, but let's go make borders. Maybe that sounds a bit too technical. Wall tiles, or, or pretty wall, let's go pretty walls, pretty walls it's fine it's fine uh, and i will put pretty walls all the way down here for uh wait let's function okay so and uh for x equals 0 to 15 do for y equals 0 to 15 do and and then we're gonna go local sig equals get sig get sig um yeah it's good that we do it before i realized oh by the way we don't want to do it everywhere so we're just gonna go if m get uh, X Y um, if that is uh, the wall tile so that's gonna be two if M gets uh, X Y uh, equals two then let's get the signature um, get sig X Y and 
And now we are going to loop through all of our signatures and we're going to see one that sticks. And if there's one that sticks, we got it. It's that easy. So we're going to go for i equals one to hashtag. We can be like hashtag wallsig do. And then I'm going to go if b comp. Did we call it b comp? If B comp um, the sig with the wall sig, wall sig um, i, and the <clears throat> the mask ms msk mask. Um, so if there is a match there, then and um, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. T T L E, comma. Let's give it a tile. Um, yeah, let's go with two for now. T L E equals two. So if we go, gonna find a match, we're gonna go T L E equals, and then we're just gonna get I. Um, not quite I. So the problem is. So um, this first entry here, that is one. In our, it's on, on the on the sprite sheet. Sadly, it's zero because I started the sprite sheet at zero. But um, after we do did this entire process, um, we created an array that starts at one. So everything is shifted by one, which makes it even more confusing. As if it wasn't confusing enough. Um, so this is one, right? So um, you can see this is tile number sixteen. So we have to add fifteen to whatever uh, match we found in our array. 15. The index of the of the match that we found is gonna be the tile that we're looking for. That's why we did this whole procedure. So every you know every index, you know one, two, three, four, five has the corresponding uh, signature that matches the, the tile in those things. So we're just gonna you know loop through this entire array, find a signature, and we find a signature, we set it there. Um, yeah, I I plus 15. That's good. Uh, and then, oh yeah, and then we, once we found a signature, we're gonna go break. Um, not sure if you use this a lot. Break basically breaks the loop that, that we're in. So it will just basically say like, all right, this this loop that we're in, the we're just gonna cancel it, and we're we're out here. And then we're gonna go m set um, x y t l e is my thinking. Will it work? Who can tell? Who can tell? Did not work. Um, but the errors that I see here are weird. So I loaded up in the second window. I loaded up the my my tile here. So some of them are okay, right? No, none of them are okay. Wait. So this should be. Um, so I'm I'm looking at the tile. This should be 21. I'm looking at the tile number uh, 21, and this should be 21, but it ends up being 19. Ah, I see what the problem is. I think we might have shifted everything by two by going in the wrong direction. Instead of adding one, we subtracted one. So let's try 17. <laughs> I like how we do we have to wait for this entire process to go through. Nope. Is this better? So, oh, we're almost there. We might be almost there, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Not sure. Okay, so I'm gonna tr do like a test case. I would just wanna execute this function on a... I wanna execute it on something that, that I understand, that I kind of have control over. Just like, kind of like, I, I want to make this work. And if this works, then then we, we can go maybe to more complicated stuff. This is, is my, my my thinking currently. Something doesn't doesn't seem to be working here, and we have to figure it out. Uh, so uh, we're gonna draw this, and we're gonna in our update function, uh, we are gonna put down when we press the button. Now an update function, not a draw function. Uh, 
here instead of map gen let me just do the let me prettify the walls this is fascinating ah oh! <laughs> you know what the problem is i didn't set the t <laughs> oh i love it so the problem is the unwalkable flag is not selected for the new wall so as i'm looping through this i change the tiles <laughs> and that kind of like uh, the following tiles get like really crazy uh, because of that this is so funny yeah and you can see like the first upper left is, is correct but then things get very confusing oh this is so good okay so let me qu real quickly set the flag zero for each one of those is there a quick way of doing this i don't think there is right Okay, let's do that. Let's see. Yes! Yes! <laughs> oh man, I was getting worried there for a second. Oh. oh man. Okay, so let's see more complicated levels. So we know generally it works. The question is like, um, you know, is there any kind of like issues that we that we see here that okay, so we see the um, the tile that goes one of the tiles. Yeah, it seems to be not co quite correct. Uh, that's going to be actually tile number zero. Funny enough, the very first tile seems to be faulty. Didn't we? Huh. Maybe it's not included. Maybe somehow we looped wrongly through the through the array. But otherwise, this looks like a really nice. I mean, it looks a bit sci-fi, but we're gonna make it make it look. We, we're gonna we're gonna deal with this in a second. But already, kind of like it, you can tell that this is this is a bit more polished now. Um, yeah, let's see. Something is wrong with this tile. This no wait, wait is it this tile though? No, it's this tile. Tile number 19 is not being being um, dealt with correctly. So let's go back and see <clears throat> what the problem is. Okay, um, 19, that's gonna be this guy here. Um, so I'm gonna compare it with with our sheet. You know, oh, that's, that's actually the wrong one. That's not 19. I mean, it says 19 here. Oh, it's mm, I remember. So the problem is tile number nineteen. That's not nineteen. <laughs> to make things more complicated, um, that's um, so. This will be not nineteen, but three. Tile number three is a problem. So this is this one. Um, so it's zero one zero one zero one, and then zero one. Okay, this is good. Ah. Here's a, like so, pasting this in <clears throat> and remembering to close it. And also while, because this is working, we can also go in a draw function, uh, draw function, no, a update function and um, turn it back to map gen. Seems good. <laughs> we have to turn this off, <laughs> although it's so pretty. Yeah, 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 this looks correct. Okay, so this is gonna be it for this episode. This is generally like the process that I wanted to introduce to you guys, and that was something that, you know, it takes a lot of effort, but the payoff is really great. Maybe like finally, um, like on a, on a final note, uh, I wanted to maybe try out uh, the following. Instead of um, instead of generating like this useful level, which pff, why would you want a useful level? Um, <laughs> we want to let's do the let's do the return here. Uh, I want to maybe try some something else. So instead of that, I just want to loop through in the level and and um, and just generate like random noise the way we had it in the very very beginning. You might remember. Um, just so we can see what to kind of like do it like a like a stress test to see how it deals like with some really crazy uh, arrangements of tiles 
Uh, so something like this, 15, 15. Um, if uh, R and D zero is smaller than 0 0.5, then and else, no end. Uh, M set um, X. Oh, I always go wrong. It's, it's, that's, that's a very bad habit to have to set uh, to always go X when you uh, Y when you want to say X. Um, and we're going to put it on one here. Let's try how that works. Um, did it complain now because we have a return here? Probably did, right? Okay, so let's make a let's just blend everything out. It's fine. Like this. Uh, unclosed function. Whoa! Oh, here as well. Mm. Hmm, that's not what we wanted. Um, oh, silly me. Yeah. Yeah, you can see that this is generating. Like this looks like a consistent level. And what I'm looking for is like breaks in flow, where it's like suddenly there, there's like a some kind of like interruption, some kind of like. Um, break in the continuity of those of those <laughs> of those little worm wormies that we generate here. But no, this looks this look, everything is good. We're throwing like really complicated patterns at it, and it seems to be good, doing well. Let's let's make it less. Let's make less spots. Yeah. So you can see we have now like this very robust function that can deal with all these things. That was a bit of an adventure today. Okay, so um, yeah, as the code for this will be in a doobly-doo for both. For our final um, version of it, like for our pork-like, uh, for our pork.p8, um, um, but also for the uh, little program that allows us to um, um, to generate the, these patterns. Uh, so both we're gonna be doing a doobly-doo, uh, but I think just for this one episode, and then in following episodes, we're not gonna show, we're just gonna continue just with P8. Uh, and the other thing is, um, yeah, we are also like the sprite sheet that I generated, the, the scanned in, the one I did with a fine liner, uh, that will also be as a as an image file, also in the doobly-doo. Join our Discord, check out the t-shirts today, I have like this cat t-shirt, not this one, the, the, the LazyDev t-shirt, and uh, yeah, see you next time around guys, bye bye!